God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. A generation needs to understand the love of God. Your family may reject you. Your nation may reject you. Circumstances may reject you. But listen, God has not rejected you. When Jesus died for you, God embraced you forever and ever. And so when you turn and nothing is working, have consolation that God loves you and that you are in the palm of his hands. When nothing is working, have consolation that there is one that loves you and is willing to give himself for you. That's the message of the gospel. And this is where Christianity begins from. That's why we say Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. That when we were worthy of death, God rather took our death and gave us his life. When Jesus gave us life, he had to lose life. He surrendered his life, took our death so that we might have life. This is why we are bold. Hey, brothers, I've traveled a little. There are places I go to, I am afraid. Because when I see the expectation of people, I know that if this thing is about anointing, I'm finished. The only thing I always rely on is the love of God. The other day we traveled to Cameroon. Before we went to Cameroon for the meeting, I traveled back to back for three weeks. In fact, I was returning from Ibadan to catch a flight that night, 12.20 a.m. That's after midnight. To, 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 to. I said, do, do these people know how tired I am? I may not even have energy to preach. And they think their answer have come. I'm in trouble. But lo and behold, when I mounted the stage, I started talking and my God showed up from nowhere. My God entered the auditorium and said, you will not be disgraced. I don't walk with you because you are strong. It is in your weakness that I'm made strong. And my God showed up. We saw people dropping crutches. Crutches were dropping. Crutches were dropping. And I told myself, I'm not feeling the anointing. There is something beyond your anointing. It's called the love of the Father. When God loves you, he gives to you more than you deserve. I don't know what you are going through, but I make both to prophesy to you tonight. Anything that the devil has stolen from you, by the authority of the love of God, receive double now. You know, if you don't walk with God, you won't know these things. Pastor Godwin was here. I was to go to Botswana. I was drained. To make things worse, they didn't send our visas because we we're supposed to leave Ghana to Botswana. Visa didn't come. I had to go through Lagos to Abuja again from, from Accra. I came back tired. The next day, I was to mount an 11 hours flight to Botswana. I got to Botswana, Gabaroni. I had to travel five hours to Francis Town. The moment I reached, it was eight o'clock. They told me the people have been waiting for three hours. I looked at the host and I said, ah, I'm just landing. Give me water to drink now. He said, sorry, sorry. Before you know what's up, their mind was go and preach. I showed up. I was still catching my breath, exhausted. I looked up, no anointing anywhere. And I said, Father, you love these people more than me. Show them your love. I had to escape from the equation. Show them your love. I stood there as I finished preaching. I say in the name of Jesus, if you are sick, receive your healing. Before I knew what was happening, crutches everywhere. People were walking out, shouting and jubilating. And we packed crutches as though it was an anointed man that showed up. He had nothing to do with anointing. He had everything to do with the love of God. Paul said, if he did not withhold his only begotten son, but gave him freely for you, how shall he not with him give you all things? You know why you are afraid of making demand? Because you think what you are asking is too big. The only thing you should be afraid of asking God for is something that is bigger than Jesus. But the last time we checked, nothing is greater than Jesus. When he gave Jesus, he gave all. When he gave Jesus, he gave all. I prophesy here tonight, anything that you lack, receive it now in the name of Jesus. can't pay my house rent please have mercy what he has given you is more than house rent oh father the doctor said this cancer will kill me 
Oh, please, 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 relax. What he gave you is more than cure to cancer. When he gave you Jesus, he gave you all. The question is, are you aware how much God loves you? If you approach anybody that loves you, you come with boldness. You come with audacity. Are you aware how much God loves you? In case you don't know, this is why the gospel is brought to you today. That God loves you more than you love yourself. That God loves you more than your parents love you. Jesus was speaking, he said, as wicked as your earthly parents are, will you ask them for bread and they give you stone? Will you ask them for fish and they give you serpent? He said, your heavenly father loves you more. God loves you too much to watch you go through pain. Can I shock you? The pains you are going through now, God is feeling more pain than you are feeling. But the protocol is that you must believe. And this is why the gospel is preached. Tonight, make up your mind. Believe that God loves you. And believe that there is nothing he will withhold from you. And see the way the power of God will manifest. The first message of the gospel is the message of the love of God. The love of God is the fatherhood of God. Sit down for a moment. The second message of the gospel is the message of the power of God. Romans 1 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. The gospel is a message of power. Why is that so? Romans 1 verse 3 and 4 he said Jesus was made of the flesh in, order, in the order of the seed of David and he was declared to be the son of God by power through the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead when Jesus rose up from the dead God was demonstrating power because until Jesus came nobody died and rose up by himself before Jesus died Jesus said destroy this temple John 2 19 in three days I will raise it up again now you need to know something there's a difference between someone being raised from the dead and somebody dying and resurrecting there are two different things God has been raising people from the dead Elijah was used to raise somebody from the dead but nobody went to the grave and came back on his own and he didn't just came back he said, I will come back in three days time. Wait for me in Jerusalem. I will meet you there. That's power talking. On the third day, I will wake up. I will meet you in Jerusalem. Tarry and wait for me. And they thought it was a joke. Jesus surrendered his life because they couldn't kill him after all. He said, this commandment have I received from my father. No one can take my life from me. I have the power to lay it down and to take it up again. And Jesus laid down his life on the cross when he said, it is finished. On the third day, they thought it was a hopeless situation. Mary Magdalene and the other women came with Maya. They wanted to rub on his body for him not to decay. Jesus decay? Decay? How? He said, you will not allow my Holy One to see corruption. How can he decay? That body doesn't decay. That body is a holy body. That body is a spiritual body. That body is a glorified body. Decay how? When they showed up, they looked. In fact, they were contemplating. Who will roll away the stone? When they arrived, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And they looked. They couldn't find the body anymore. Oh, they have stolen the body. And Jesus showed up. <laughs> And Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener. And he held him. He, he came towards him. Where have you kept my master? Where have you kept my Lord? Kept? Can they keep me? They don't keep me. I keep the whole world. Who is, who is keeping who? Nobody keeps me. I keep the earth. I keep the heavens. I keep eternity. Who is talking about kept? They don't keep me. And she was crying. Where is he? Suddenly he turned and said, Mary. The moment they said Mary and Mary turned, the glory flashed. And Mary knelt down, Rabboni. And Mary wanted to hold him. He said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to heaven. The power we are talking about here is not just about the grave. It's about defining gravity. So Jesus did not defy the grave only. He defied gravity. 
And he didn't just defy gravity. He also defied the law of nature. Because if Jesus ascended, he would have gone to Jupiter. He would have gone to Pluto. Because when you leave the earth, you go to another planet. Or you get lost in the galaxies. But when Jesus approached the sky, he translated. So he migrated from the natural to the supernatural. He migrated from the physical to the spiritual. And he transited from earth to heaven. And went and sat at the right hand of God. So the testimony of the gospel is the testimony of power. This is why we preach the gospel. If death could not hold him captive, what can hold you captive? There are three levels of power Jesus demonstrated. While he was on earth, he was stopping what the devil was doing. The Bible says if a strong man keeps his house, it will take a stronger man than him to overpower him and defy the spoil. Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So the first power Jesus demonstrated was power to stop the oppression of the devil. But that was not all. The second power Jesus demonstrated was power to disarm the devil. Because when he went to the cross, a, a battle took place. All the demons and all the principalities gathered together and said while he was on earth, he was dealing with us. Now let's trap him here. And they invited every devil from everywhere and say he will not leave Hades lock the door of Hades lock the key of lock the key of Hades he will not go anywhere we will trap him here but something happened Jesus kept quiet on the first day international demons were coming some were coming from Russia others were coming from Nigeria others were coming from Cameroon others were coming from Congo others were coming from America others were coming from London Jesus didn't say anything on the second day demons were coming from the second heaven and demons principalities powers rulers were all coming jesus didn't say anything on the third day satan himself showed up jesus now said this is the time and the bible said in colossians 2 14 having spoiled principalities and powers he made a public show of them triumphing over them by the cross You know what? You know what I imagine when I was reading that scripture? The demons he cast out from the madman of Gadara. They were angry. They caught them and told them, Do you remember that man that came and dealt with you? We have locked him in hell. He said, What? I'm coming. This is my time to revenge. I remember the man that was held bound for 38 years that Jesus rebuked him on. They called him and said, Do you know that man that dealt with you? We have locked him in hell. They say, hold him, I'm coming. I remember the woman that was bent over for 18 years that Jesus rebuked. They told the demon, he is here. We have locked her. Come quickly, let's deal with him. When all of them gathered, Manta, Kaparata, Velelala, Shabagata, Baragado, Baragade, Esesila, Baragada, Jesus rose up from the grave and scattered all of them. Show! That was not all. After he defeated them, he went to Satan and knocked him. Give me the key of hell now. Give me that key now. You collected it from Adam. Bring it back. And he collected it. Pocketed it. They thought he would go. He didn't go. He had to demonstrate another power. He now went to death itself. And he fought death. And destroyed death. And collected the key of death. So when he resurrected, he resurrected with two keys. The key of hell and the key of death. And when he showed up, the apostles were afraid. And he told them the time for fear is over. This is the time for dominion. He said, all hail the king. All power in heaven and on earth have been given to me. You go in that power. In my name, cast out devils. In my name, heal the sick. In my name, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. Brothers and sisters, the reason we are bold is because the battle is over. We are more than conqueror. Jesus fought the battle for us to enjoy the victory. I prophesy over you. 
every affliction you have goes down now. I was going to Zambia to preach and somebody called me and said somebody said all these fake Nigerian pastors that as he's coming to Zambia they should make sure he's disgraced they should bring real sick people let's watch and see if they will be healed what I said do you know how we come I'm not coming in my name I'm not coming and as a Nigerian I'm coming in the name of the Lord and he said the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run not therein and they are saved he said my name cast out devils who told you I'm coming in my name I was angry in my spirit I came the first day I was looking for people who had evidential sickness and God healed tumors deafness I said no there's no way you can hold this one in the picture I want that person to see it on the second day I came with my white suit as I was preaching somebody shouted from the back I can walk and lift her crutches I said come here that's where we are talking about and when I lifted that crutches I said where is this person come and see it you too come and see God disgrace you sickness is not a problem sin is not a problem the power of resurrection dealt with it can I tell you something everybody sick here tonight will be healed and that's not the miracle you know what the miracle is all of you hearing me now as you go out from monday you will pray for the sick and the sick will be healed i'm not ashamed of the gospel it's the power of god you know the beauty of the gospel everybody can manifest god when it has to do with the anointing some may be anointed specially but in the context of the gospel everybody can manifest god widows can manifest god orphans can manifest god children can manifest god old men old women can manifest god that's the glory of the gospel and i speak over your life from tonight manifest dimensions of god sit down I'm rounding up. I'm giving you a basis for our faith. The power is not your power. It's the power of God walking through you. And that power is the power of resurrection. The power in your life now has defied death. The power in your life now has defied Satan. Satan knows the power you carry because he collided with it once and he was defeated. Sickness know the power you carry. Death know the power you carry. It was the same power that God demonstrated when he rose Jesus from the dead. That's the power you carry. You are not ordinary. When you accept Jesus, power is in you. Power is in you. This is what the message came to do. It's not to give you facts about a historical event. It's to in initiate you into a dimension of power. The third message of the gospel is the message of mercy.